Key to the Southern economy by the early 19th century, chattel slavery, the holding of enslaved Africans as property, led to unimaginably inhumane treatment. Although some enslaved laborers worked on small farms, the majority worked on plantations, large estates where cash crops were grown. Their work days were long, beginning before sunrise and lasting until after sunset, and difficult as they labored tirelessly in the hot sun doing a variety of agricultural and other tasks. When their day was done, slaves endured harsh living conditions. Enslaved workers were housed in small, crudely built cabins. They rarely had enough food to eat and the spread of diseases such as cholera and hepatitis was rampant. Enslaved workers faced other threats beyond backbreaking labor. Planters frequently separated families by selling individuals to other plantations. White slaveholders sexually harassed and raped African American women. Because of, or perhaps in spite of, these circumstances, enslaved workers looked for ways to resist. Among other tactics, many destroyed crops, slowed their work, and faked illnesses. Some enslaved workers tried to escape to the North, often using the Underground Railroad, a secret system of safe houses managed by conductors who helped slaves escape to freedom. In rare cases, enslaved workers led uprisings and revolts against slaveholders. One example is Nat Turner's 1831 rebellion in Virginia. A slave and religious leader, Turner and his followers killed 60 white men, women, and children. The rebellion was soon put down, but Turner eluded capture for two months. In the meantime, some 50 African Americans were tried, about half of whom were found guilty. After his arrest, Turner and 16 of his followers were executed. Following Nat Turner's rebellion, slaveholders considered additional uprisings to be highly plausible. In addition to more direct forms of resistance, Africans forced to the Americas and their descendants resisted the hardships of their lives through their families, religion, folklore, and music, creating a rich African-American culture. When enslaved Africans were brought to the Americas, slave owners forced them to abandon their native cultures. Enslaved Africans responded by developing a new cultural identity that borrowed from Euro-American social traditions and maintained distinctive African elements. Many enslaved Africans adopted Christianity, for example, but they retained elements of their African spiritual traditions. Other important parts of slave culture were storytelling and music. Storytelling continued a long-lived oral tradition and helped preserve elements of African culture. Traditional folk tales, for instance, featured characters like the clever Br'er Rabbit, who routinely outsmarted bigger and stronger animals, and beloved Bible stories encouraged community resilience in the face of hardship. Religious songs in the form of spirituals also became prominent in enslaved and free black society. Many of these songs followed a call and response pattern in which a performer would sing a line or stanza to the group and the group would respond in unison with an answering chorus. Spirituals not only framed the hardships faced by enslaved people in biblical terms, but they also passed coded messages about plans for escaping to freedom right under the noses of their masters. For example, in the song, Follow the Drinking Gourd, listeners are given these directions. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. Decoded, the lyrics, the sun comes back and the first quail calls, say to set out in early spring. They are also told to follow the drinking gourd, that is, the Big Dipper constellation, which points to the North Star. This will lead them to the old man, an agent of the Underground Railroad, and to freedom, usually in the free northern states or Canada. <laughs>